You're listening to The Rich Life Revolution with me, Michelle Cooper. My mission is to empower you to step into your next level of wealthy. You'll hear all the deets, a little bit of inspiration, and real life takeaways so that you can create your own rich life revolution. Let's dig in. Hey there, welcome to episode 10, your dream body and your rich life go hand in hand, where I'm interviewing the amazing Jamie Morocco. In today's episode, Jamie and I are diving into the connection between your body, your self-image, weight, and money. This episode is on fire. Jamie gives us all some real talk about our emotional connection to food and spending and how that totally is a direct connection to our wealth. Enjoy the show. Hey, Jamie, so good to see you. Good to see you too, Michelle. Thank you so much for having me. Oh, I am so excited to talk to you. I am a little bit of a fangirl online. Follow your posts. I think we, maybe I got to know you in a, in a coach's community and I just really am very inspired about the work that you're doing in the world and being on my own health journey over the past five years. I feel like I've tried every single thing out there in existence and I love what you share and I love your message to the world. So welcome to the Rich Life Revolution. Thank you. Thank you. I'm so excited to be here. So why don't we start with a little bit, tell us a little bit about your you and your story. I think it's so, so inspirational. Thank you. Yeah, so I grew up and I was overweight for the first half of my life and I really saw the world through that lens. I did not feel good in my body. I was like the skin, the curvy girl and all my, you know, friends were these really skinny blondes. I was like the curvy, heavy brunette. And it really affected every aspect of my life, relationships, friendships, you know, boys, how I showed up in school, how I showed up in jobs and and everything. And I had very low self-esteem and I had tried a bunch of, you know, different things to try to lose weight and nothing worked. And then finally, I went off to college and I decided that now was the time to really make an identity shift and really, really figure this out. So I lost over 60 pounds, kind of went on the other end of the spectrum, got too skinny and exercise obsessed, and then found my way back to balance and became a personal trainer. But I went from being like a C student to an A student. I went from attracting relationships that just weren't serving me to like amazing relationships and friendships. My life really did a 180 and I always say all the time, like my weight loss was the reason for all of my success and honestly happiness in my life because it wasn't so much about the weight as it was how I felt. And I didn't feel like I was at home in my body. So me achieving that alignment really was the catalyst for future success and future love and all these things. I always knew I wanted to be an entrepreneur. I actually went to undergrad and grad school for entrepreneurship. And being a personal trainer, I, you know, I had different jobs, worked in different industries and I was working in the tech industry in, you know, the 2013, 2016, around that time. And that's when I decided to, it was time for me to start working for myself in a bigger way. So I built my online weight loss coaching business in in 2013. And I've been doing that ever since. So for the last, like almost 10 years. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Almost 10 years. Crazy. Yeah. I'm like trying to do the math. (laughs) So yeah. So it's something I'm really, really passionate about, really excited about because for me, and I think for a lot of women losing the weight can actually change our life. And I feel like people are so afraid to say that sometimes, but it was my truth. And obviously it's not everybody's and that's okay. But if it's one person's truth, it might be other people's truth too. Absolutely. Absolutely. I so relate to your story. Like I've always been tall. I've always been the tallest when I was growing up and just like overall, just like a bigger person. And so you like in those years of growing up and like what teen does feel comfortable in their body? Not really. It feels kind of weird. And so you kind of like for me, I kind of shrunk a little bit. And I remember when I was in my final year of high school, my brother got me a job at the gym that he worked out at. And 
that completely shifted how I showed up in the world. Just the confidence from exercising, from building muscle. Like I, I handled myself differently. I stood differently. Now I did go down a not so healthy route, maybe similar to you of like exercise obsessed and very restrictive of food. And I think it's very interesting when I look at pictures of me when I was 18, 19, 20, I am so thin, but I clearly remember those times feeling like I was overweight and I'm very, like I'm, I've got, I'm strong. I've got muscles, but I'm very thin, the thinnest I've ever been, but I actually felt the best in my life. So it's an interesting kind of paradox for me around like my relationship with my body and food and exercise and how that directly relates to how I show up in the world, whether that's as a mom, a wife, a friend, a sister, and a business owner. So one of the things that really caught my eye on your social media feed was a post that you did about the connection between weight loss and money. And until I read that post, I hadn't actually made that connection. So I know that you are living your best life and maybe you can tell us a little bit about where you live and what have you manifested in your life since starting that new business? Yeah, definitely. Well, I always say that losing weight made me a millionaire and I mean that because again, me addressing the fact that I didn't feel good in my body led me to have the courage to start my own business, led me to be able to attract a high value man. And I don't mean a high net worth man. My husband and I, we didn't have anything when we met, but somebody who was equally ambitious and entrepreneurial thinking, those things are very important to me. And together, you know, we have built something that is still in the process of being built, but we've achieved, you know, in the last several years, something that I'm very, very proud of. And I know that if it wasn't for me losing the weight, that there's just no way that I would have been able to do that because I would have been too focused on my body and feeling just completely out of alignment. So, you know, about three and a half years ago, we were living with my parents, really working our little tails off, trying to build our businesses because my husband's an entrepreneur too. And now we own a penthouse on Miami Beach. So that's just a testament to like, number one, it, it wasn't an overnight success. It took time and we lived with my parents for three years and we sacrificed our savings and social life. So it definitely was not an overnight success, but I would say that in a short time frame, it was rather rapid for what we were able to achieve. And that's just a testament to when you feel aligned in your path and you're sharing your passion and you're relentless about it, that you will achieve success no matter what. So that's kind of like our story and how I feel that for me, weight and money have a very strong correlation. Now that I don't worry about my weight, you know, I've maintained my own results for nearly 20 years and I eat whatever I want. I exercise how I want. Now that it's no longer a thing and I feel good in my body and I feel confident and I can wear clothes off the rack and I just know it's going to look good. I'm saying that not to say I'm special or brag or anything like that. I just know what it's like on all ends of the spectrum and to not have those worries anymore. It frees up my creativity and my energy to actually pour into other people and pursue the things I'm passionate about. Okay. Just cause you mentioned this, I'm going to bring this up. <laughs> so I have lost, I've lost 75 pounds over the course of the last year. Now I've been on a weight loss journey for five years and I feel like I have done everything that is humanly possible to try to lose the weight and really struggled for many, many years. It really took me understanding partly what you talk about, the science of weight loss, but also understanding that I had to love myself right now where I am at in order to be able to feel safe in my body and for my body to be able to let go of like release some of this weight. And in the course of that, like I was recently going to Croatia on a, a holiday for three weeks and I had to get some new clothes because none of my clothes fit. And so I went to the store and I went to the store I usually go to, which is Torrid, which is for like larger size people. And I love Torrid. And 
realized that I was actually on the lower end of their sizing. And a lot of the things I picked up that I liked, they weren't in my size. And I was looking for a bathing suit. And so across from that was a store called Le Vian Rose and they sold swimwear and lingerie. And I was like, well, I don't know, maybe I'll just go there and see if they have any larger sizes. Well, I go there and I can pick something off the rack and put it on and it fits. In fact, it was too big. I had to get a smaller size. I literally am like doing a happy dance in the changing room. Okay. And if you've ever been someone who has carried extra weight and the how that weighs you down when you try to go shopping and find something that feels good on your body... To have an opposite experience where you can grab something off the rack in a, like a normal size store, I say that in quotes, right? And to fit and or be too big, like I can't tell you the joy that that experience brought. It brought me to tears. And then the fitting room lady, she, I think she wondered what the hell is going on in there, right? And she like knocks, she's like, are you okay? And I'm like, I open the door and I'm standing there in a bikini and I'm like, am I okay? I am freaking awesome. Like, this is amazing, right? And so the whole room, like the whole fitting room, we all had like a little dance about it, which I don't think it's necessarily common for like women trying on bathing suits, to be honest. <laughs> so yeah, so that's definitely a thing. And of course, then, you know, you've got to have the money to buy these things, right? So I love that you make that connection between weight loss and achieving your personal net worth goals, right? Or, or on your way. You always post amazing pictures from your penthouse. I love seeing the ocean and stuff. So if anybody has not already following Jamie on social media, you need to do that because her imagery is phenomenal. What's it like to live in Miami? I love it there. Yeah, we love it. We live in an area called Sunny Isle. So it's a little bit out of the craziness of South Beach. And I really like it. It's about like a three mile string of a high rises on the ocean. And I love it. I, waking up to the ocean every day, like I'm a Boston girl and I really don't like the snow anymore. I was kind of over it. So to wake up to the ocean every day in warm weather is everything. That is awesome. That is so awesome. Something that you mentioned recently in a Facebook post was, I copied it here so I can read this out for our listeners. You said, the thing that you spend the most time thinking about or avoiding is the very thing you need to be spending your time, money, and attention on. For many women, this means addressing how they feel in their body, healing their relationship with food, and releasing weight. I thought it was a very powerful post and commentary. I tend to say the same thing about money um, when I'm working with my clients. And so can you tell me a little bit about maybe what inspired that post or like go a little bit deeper on that? Definitely. I work with all types of women, stay-at-home moms, entrepreneurs, women in corporate. And I would say that I think that there's this collective feeling of I don't know if it's possible for me or I'm not worth it to go all in like on my body or like I'm afraid of failure. And those underlying feelings lead to almost like haphazard effort. And obviously like this is nobody's fault. This, I think this is part of the conditioning that, you know, we have to break as women is it's okay to put ourselves first. But I noticed that there's almost this like feeling of like either it won't work or I have to be perfect. So what that looks like, the way that that shows up is almost this haphazard, well, I'm not going to invest so much in this goal or I'll try and see if it works. Like just this more general vibe of like, I'll give it a try or I'll put it on the back burner. And what I tell women when they come into my world is that if you want to lose this weight, it has to be the most important thing in your life right now. And I say that because I know that this is something, if somebody's weight bothers them, if they don't feel comfortable in their body, it's not just like something that they're dealing with that they think about some of the time. 
They're thinking about it when they wake up in the morning, when they walk into the closet, when they eat breakfast, when they're intimate with their significant other, when they're walking down the street, when they're being interviewed, then lunchtime. So these are thousands of thoughts and feelings throughout the day that are probably not the most positive, that are continuing to keep them in a perpetual cycle of sadness and angst and honestly depression as it relates to their body. So when I say that if you're not happy in your in your body and you wanna do something about it, it must be the thing that you devote the most time, money and intentionality to. It's because I know what's on the other side of that. The reason that I call my program Dream Body, Dream Life is because I know that for many women, like with myself, when we change our body, the rest of the, our life changes because now we're operating in a vessel that feels more aligned. And on a spiritual level, you know, what happens there is we start to attract things that are now aligned with that and other things start to, to drop away. So for a lot of women, the weight is the thread that pulls everything, but it's almost like they're scared to allow themselves to go all in it. So that's why I'm really passionate about that message. Like this must be the thing of focus for now so that you can have that freedom later. Yeah, for sure. I I 100% agree. Like when you don't feel good in your body, when you don't feel confident, when you don't feel safe, you're not like the fully expressed version of yourself. So you're you're not going to like if you're single and you want a relationship, you're not going to attract the person that's out there for you, like the potentiality of that. If you're not fully you at your highest level, right? And I think about, you know, in the past being overweight. So I was about 300 pounds. I'm 5'10". That's a large person, right? And I felt like I had mentioned to you earlier, like I felt like a bit of a fraud in my business because I'm sitting here telling people they can have everything they desire you know, they can have the money they want, they can tidy up their finances, they can clean all this chaos up and manifest their dream life. And I felt a little bit like, if I had it all together, I wouldn't be this fat, I wouldn't be this overweight. And so then I didn't want to show up. In fact, I remember speaking at an event in 2020, it was in Orlando. And there was about 1800 people in the audience. And it was one of the lowest times in my life. And I had to go up there and talk about how awesome life was and how people could do anything they set their mind to. And there was limitless possibilities. If only, you you know, you got clear on what you believe and, and this conscious self-leadership aspect, which I totally believed. And I was in the process of working through myself. But the fact is, is I was overweight. I was at least 100 pounds overweight. And so I didn't feel great. It's interesting that a lot of people loved that talk. And in fact, a couple came up to me. They were actually brother and sister. And the the man said to me, thank you so much for your talk. It was amazing. It brought my sister to tears and she feels so inspired. And I was like, well, that's amazing. That's awesome. And I was like, where is she? And he's like, oh, she's over there. She's too shy. And I'm like, well, let's go talk to her. And so we went over there. And this is going to sound awful, but it was one of the things I needed to hear directly from the universe. She said, thank you for your talk. It was so inspiring because you're fat and I'm fat. And I know that I can go and do the things I need to do to have a successful business. And I was like, oh, okay. (laughs) Like, I don't know how to take that, right? And I kind of like was like, oh, well, it's good. I inspired her, but I needed to hear that reflected right back at me. In that moment, you know, I thanked her. I said how grateful I was. And I walked back to my hotel room and I cried my eyes out. And my friend who was with me on that trip, she was like, what's going on? And I was like, she called me fat. And she's like, okay, well, why is that giving you such an emotional response? I said, because it's true. And I don't want to be this way. And nothing I'm doing is working. And I don't know what to do. And it's just the frustration, right, coming through. So there's always opportunities, I think, for us to 
hear these messages from God, the universe, whatever it is to you, whoever is listening, um, we have to be open to hear them. And what I realized was that the work I was doing on myself was having a direct impact in my bank balance. The more I got into alignment with myself and showed up as the person I wanted to be, who didn't overeat, who prioritized self-care, which included gentle exercise, like not crazy cardio and like killing myself on the treadmill and really took steps to love myself. The, my bank balance, grew, like my business grew. It's the year my business hit a million dollars. And I was like, okay, well, this is a thing. Like, this is important. And so I prioritized that more and more. And so is that some of how you work with your clients? Is that what, when you say like, this has to be the most important thing in their life? Yeah. I mean, and, and the relationship between uh, money, food, body, and women, it really varies because some women will use their weight as an apology, almost like they have the money, they have the relationship, they have the house, they have everything, but they say, but I'm fat. So nobody can a actually really hate me. Oh, I that a lot. And I also get the weight is a smokescreen for being seen, going all in, living my life to the fullest. So I see many different shades of how weight and money and food and body play with each other. It's just interesting to see the different dynamics with different people. But of course, I coach through all of that because really that's just a story. But I am very honest with people. And I do say, you know, as somebody who has been both underweight and overweight and as somebody who has not had things that society deems as desirable and to have more things that society deems as desirable, you do get more flack. You do get more hate. I never sugarcoat that for people because it's true. And really, I know I'm kind of going on a tangent, but the question is never like, how do I avoid that? It's really, how do I build myself up stronger so that I can deal with it? I think you touched on something so important there that I never even considered, right? Like this whole concept of like an apology, it comes into this conversation of like, I can't have it all, right? Or like, how good can life get? Right. Which is something I actually asked myself when I was in on my holiday in Croatia, floating around on a yacht for three weeks. Like I was like, God, this is like life can't get any better than this. And I was like, I take that back, grab those words back <laughs> and swallow them. Right. But the idea of an apology, because it can feel I have been there and I'm sure still will be there in some aspects of like. A lot of things are really great and you want to show people how awesome they are as an inspiration and perhaps some motivation. And then you'll get the haters, right? Who will be, oh, like I even had somebody very close to me who I care about a lot tell me that I was being self-absorbed and conceited. And I was like, whoa, that hurts. Like, what do you mean? So I can see how... You can have all these things and then you can have this one thing that doesn't feel like it's the best thing in the world. And that can be your apology for having all the things. Wow. Mind blown, Jamie. Yeah, it's a big one. It's good to have self-awareness around that too, because otherwise you're really living for other people and not yourself when you don't go after the things that you like. And I've been called all, I've been called fat phobic. I've been, you know, just all sorts of things that you hear, you know, accusations that aren't true. And, you know, I'm not here to live my life for anybody else. I'm here to share my work and help the people that I'm supposed to help and live a life that I believe is of integrity and going after the things I want so I can be an example to other people too. And the rest, like, it's kind of like, it still hurts, of course, but we have to remember who we're living for. And if it's for other people's opinions, then we're not living for us. So do you just ignore those comments? Like, do you have a way that you handle those kind of situations? I get really mad. I haven't really evolved to the point where they don't bother me because I have my really mad day or like a couple hours. Like 
a couple days ago, some fake account commented that people who I grew up with were commenting that I had like bariatric surgery and I was never at a BMI that was high enough that would qualify. My, my dad's actually a clinical psychologist. He does the psychological evaluations for these procedures for people. I would have never even been at the BMI to qualify, but I also, that's just not something that I do. And I would have obviously shared that if I did. And it was just like, it really made me mad because it was like someone out there is trying to take away from my message or downplay, you know, my health journey or my success or whatever. So I get upset. I talk to my husband about it and then I just get over it. And I laugh because at the end of the day, like I'm doing something and you're doing something that not a lot of people will do in their life. And that's running a business, a successful business and, you know, sharing our passion and our work with the world. And I always believe that if there are people that are out there who are trying to put you down, like there will never be somebody who's more successful than you or more happy than you trying to bring you down. It just doesn't happen that way, right? So I have to remind myself of that, but definitely the, I think those things, sting. I think they always sting. I think the level of severity just changes the stronger that you get and the more apt that you get to deal with it. I agree. I think, and also like I would just add, I think it depends on who it's from, right? Random people you don't know on social media who really cares. Everybody's going to have opinions and stuff, right? But I think when it comes from somebody that you love and trust, that hurts a little bit more. But for me, the way I look at it, it is that that's about them. It's not about me. And so there might be something for me to see there in a reflection, like in a mirror kind of thing. But it really is about them. And I can check in with myself. Why does this sting so much? Is there something here for me to look at? Maybe there is, maybe there isn't, right? It's it's never fun to have people say crappy things. And sometimes people are just really crappy humans. <laughs> they have to be very miserable to be spending their time doing that. Right? I know. So one of the things that you also, I saw you talking about a lot on of social media is around emotional eating. And the work that I do with clients in regards to money is often 99% emotion. <laughs> we get very emotional about money. It's our today's version of survival state. Like it's our today's version of being eaten by a lion or whatever, right? And so I found it interesting when you were talking about emotions, emotional eating, and you're like, of course we are emotional beings. So we are going to have an emotional relationship with food. And I was like, oh, here I was thinking this was a thing I wanted to not have because I'm recently aware that I do have an emotional reaction with food. And so then it was like, oh, okay. So then I just need to look at what that really emotional reaction is maybe. And then I started, of course, my mind goes to money. It's like, okay, well, of course people are going to have an emotional reaction to money. It's not about removing that. It's about changing it. So can you share a little bit more about like our emotional guidance system, our emotions around food and how we, you know, relate to eating. And I think there's obviously a direct relationship to money there too. Oh yeah, absolutely. So the way that I really came to this conclusion was self-experimentation because I had been overweight, I had been underweight, and then I had been at my maintenance weight for a very long time. And I kept trying to figure out like, well, why do I still just like want to eat a cookie? Like I really just wanted to get curious about that. And then I was like, well, why is that wrong if it's actually not hurting how I want to feel, how I want to look or my health? And then I realized that the emotional component for many people is there. And if we look at, you know, just like cultural traditions across the globe, there has always been an emotional connection traditions with food and things like this, right? So then I thought, well, what if it's not really a bad thing or something that's wrong to have an emotional relationship with food? What if it's more about the context? So for example, like, you know, I recently had a client going through a difficult time and she really wanted to eat like these brownies. And I said, well, here's how you can eat, emotionally eat the brownies in a way that supports you. Don't have six of them, have one. And have it fit into, you know, I, I give clients calorie targets and things that have it fit into your calorie targets. 
So she had the brownie. It satisfied the emotional need. And it was supportive of how she wants to look and feel because it was within the, the, you know, the boundaries of her program. So that to me is actually really empowering versus trying to tell ourselves that we will never eat out of emotion. I would be a liar if I said that because even though I've maintained my weight for so long, sometimes I just eat a cookie because I'm like stressed or I want a cookie or like, who knows? But I don't binge on them like I used to. And that's the difference. That's when emotional eating is actually empowering versus self-sabotage. Yeah, that is that is so good. And, you know, like I've heard people talk about, you know, eating intentionally and being very present with how you're feeling when you're eating. And when I kind of adopted that practice, that's when I realized I am not hungry right now and I'm just eating for some other reason. There's an emotional component there. And I also don't believe in restricting ourselves. So like you said, it's not like gorging on a pack of brownies. It's like for me, on when I was on, in Croatia, all the meals are prepared by a chef and they're absolutely delicious. And I wouldn't ever finish. Like there were three course meals at like lunch and dinner, right? And it's like, okay, well, I'm going to taste this, fully engage in this. But I know that there's something else coming. I want to be available to this next thing, right? And then, you know, at the end, the, you know, the dessert comes out and I never actually finished anything on my plate, which was a very different experience than any other time in my life where it's like, I've got to eat all the food because, you know, I got to have it all for some reason. So I think that's a really impactful point, right? That like, we don't need to run away from these emotions. We need to understand them. Exactly. Understanding them. Sometimes they do need to be unpacked. Sometimes you just had a day and you just want a brownie, you know, it's like, but what I always tell clients is like, it's never what you do that matters the most. What matters the most is the meaning that you give it. So if making it mean something bad that you had that brownie, then the answer to your growth isn't that you shouldn't have eaten it. It's that you feel guilty now for eating it. So we have to work on changing the meaning. Right. And do you see with the clients that you work with, do you see like that direct result between they lose weight or, you know, whatever they, they reach their goals and then maybe a variety of things shift in their life around abundance, around like manifesting their desires. Is that a common experience? hundred percent. And it doesn't always show up in the way that they think because there is duality in everything. So I've had many clients come in and get divorces. They've also found their soulmates. They lose their jobs, but then they start their own businesses or they find better jobs. So it's when you rise, when you are doing the thing that you know you need to do for yourself, the things that no longer align with the elevated version of you are going to fall away. And it might not be in the way that you think, right? It might be in a way that actually is going to force you to grow even more. Diamonds are formed under pressure. But yeah, it's ultimately taking you to where you want. So I see it all the time. And that is why I call my program the thing that I do, because when people sign up, I'm like, get ready for this, because when you start to drop the weight and you start to feel better, the things in your life that no longer align are going to come up as a means for you to resolve it. And you're going to start to attract more of what you want. I always tell people like, you know, you've got to get through the chaos and part of the chaos is the falling down, right? Like if people, listeners follow tarot, it's the tower card, right? It's the crumbling of things. You want that to happen fast. Like you actually should be welcoming that because it's part of your transformation. Feel like it never looks the way you think it's going to look. And so often I think we're playing defense rather than offense in our lives and our business, right? We're trying to maintain this status quo of where we're at when we want the next level, but at the same time, we're not, we're not living life offensively, like kind of going out there and getting it. We're defense mode. And that would apply to your body as well. So good. This is such a great conversation. Thank you so much. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I really enjoyed it. So good. So good. So how, if people are like super inspired, want to take this next level step in their health journey, what can they do with you? Tell us how people work with you. Yeah. So I have my signature program that's called Dream Body, Dream Life. 
And essentially what we do is I focus on permanent weight loss, not just weight loss, permanent. So only 3% of people who lose weight keep it off. I'm part of the 3%. The women that work for me are part of the 3%. And it's my job to get my clients to become part of that as well. So from a strategic level, I have a specific process that I take people through that involves not only getting you to your goal, but transitioning the body out from like more of a biological standpoint so that you end up maintaining your weight, eating over 2000 calories a day, which is what most women need, (laughs) at least that to function well, and doing so intuitively without worrying about their weight or their body. Now I teach things using three lenses, science, mindset, and energetics. So everything I teach is rooted in science because the conscious mind needs something to ground itself into. And this is why I'm not a fan of more intuitive strategies for weight loss because there's too much mind chatter up here. We have to understand the mechanism so that we can ground into something. So that's the science. Mindset looks at like the stories like we were talking about, like what do you believe to be true about your body and your body's ability to lose weight and food? So looking at the stories and the belief systems and you know, deconstructing the ones that no longer serve us and constructing ones that do. And then energetics is who are you being as you go through your journey? You know, are you eating in a state of stress or are you eating in a state of trust? Are you working out in a state of stress or are you working out in a state of trust and belief? So really looking at that vibe that you're bringing to the experience, because of course that's going to reflect back in your results. So those are really the cornerstones of my program. And then you know, it's everything is highly customized. We make adjustments as people's bodies change and as they go through their journey. And if anybody's interested in learning more, they can certainly reach out to me. And the best part is you can eat whatever food you want and still lose weight because I don't do meal plans. I teach you how to make your own food choices so that you're fully empowered around food and no longer have to worry or rely on, you know, shakes or things like this. I always tell people that a piece of chocolate cake can take you just as close to your goal as a piece of broccoli when you know how to use it. Oh, I love that. Oh my God. (laughs) That's so good. I don't like broccoli, so I'd be all in (laughs) the chocolate cake. Um, But yeah, I I 100% agree. And yeah, our work is very much in alignment. And so I love this. I really want to encourage our listeners, if this is an area that you're wanting to shift some things you want to work on in your health, I wish I had known you five years ago when I was at the beginning of this. It's taken me a long time to get to this place. And And then there's still a journey for me to go to, right? There's still another 25-ish pounds to drop. And then I find myself worried about that point. Like, oh my God, can I maintain it? And I don't want to be part of that 97% that gains it back. So it's a lifelong commitment, I think, to ourselves. So I love this. You may find me on your wait list for your program. Yes, please reach out anytime. <laughs> awesome. Thanks so much for hanging out with us. All the links to Jamie's stuff will be in our show notes. Follow her on social media. She shares a lot of really great content and stuff for free. And I might see you in her program. Who knows? So hearing Jamie talk about our emotional responses to eating and our emotional responses to spending was a game changer for me. I always thought I wasn't an emotional eater, but the way Jamie relates to the emotional aspects of food and how normal that is, was the pivotal moment for me. Let's all drop the good and bad label and let's just be with what is. As Jamie so quotably said, it's never what you do that matters the most, it's the meaning you give it. I would love to hear your biggest takeaway from this episode. DM me on Instagram or Facebook. I answer all the messages. And be sure to watch for next week's episode. This is a solo episode where I get real about more money not being the answer to all your problems. I know I'm probably putting myself out there for some hate. And many of us are caught up in the more money is the answer cycle but I promise you it's not. I've been there. I'm on the other side of that. And I want to help you understand that better. Thanks for hanging out with me. I hope you got at least one gold nugget today. Be sure to grab your copy of the Rich Life Revolution workbook 
to help you set the foundation for your next level of wealthy. Get it now at richliferevolution.ca and I'll see you later.